When the Sadducees, who seem to be the influential party with regard to the order of things, approached the Lord, they thought they had him cornered. The case they present with this lady who had had the seven brothers and then dies after they all do seems to be a great confutation of anything with regard to the possibility of the soul going on. There's too much confusion as to who belonged to who. The Lord, interestingly, as his court of appeal, uses what they do accept. Different from the Pharisees, they really only base their doctrine on what can be found in the Pentateuch, the first five books. And there it is not yet clear what happens after death. There is an evolution in the thought of the Hebrew people over time, and one can see it especially when it comes to the period of the Maccabees. But in appealing to these ancient writings, the Pentateuch, the Lord is using what they actually accept, and he pulls out of this passage about the burning bush a surprise. I am. He's the God of these people that they appeal to. It reminds us of a saying of his, which we find in St. John, before Abraham was, I am. Now, with regard to the soul, it has always puzzled the travellers of time. In the classics, those of ancient Greece and Rome, we find the presumption that there is a process of metempsychosis, reincarnation, and one sees the authors there presenting the souls as going into the beyond having their memory washed in the waters of Lethe and then waiting for another available body to come back. We find something similar in the whole Hindu block and that ancient tradition in Asiatic countries. Buddhists too, who have Hindu origins, they would be aware of the mystery of the beyond and of what they would refer to as good or bad karma, that is to say that there is retribution in the form of coming back in a higher or lower form of life. It is incomplete, it is actually erroneous, but what is interesting is that mankind over the centuries has always been aware of retribution, an awareness of fairness, and it is in that sense, a warning to all, that we all seem to know that there might be something there in the beyond and that we might actually have, as we would say in Ireland, our comeuppance. And actually that bit is true. We can't avoid it. And secretly, we sort of know it must be the case, if we're honest because our conscience tells us something and people are a bit nervous and would prefer actually to argue it out of existence rather than face it. Their conscience is not in peace. And it is true. There is a balancing out of the books in the beyond and what we write on our copybook comes back to us in that beyond. With regard to the nature of the soul, the Lord gives a definition in this Gospel indicating how badly they have understood the scriptures and the nature of things. There, the instinct for marriage has no raison d'être. It's quite different. The soul has a structure which, as the Lord puts it, is similar to that of the angels. Actually, it's stronger. It's equal. 
because the word in Greek is is angeloi, same as the angels, and therefore our soul has an angelic structure in its spiritual part, which is therefore the essence of it and the part that will go on without the body. The soul is the spiritual part of us, and it can be itself sufficient until the last day when it is reunited with the body. Modern science actually can prove that. I spent weeks and weeks translating the Purgatory Manuscript and the Hell Manuscript years ago in the 80s in France, and there are interesting bits of light from the mysterious beyond coming through. Here we have what the departed soul, the, the surviving soul, the nun is helping, trying to help her to get out of purgatory, the other nun, and this is given to her to understand. <coughs> the soul in purgatory has this to say, How am I to tell you and describe to you what takes place after the agony? It isn't possible to understand it properly without having gone through it. I'll try nevertheless to explain it to you as best I can. The soul, as it leaves the body, has a feeling of being utterly bewildered, completely besieged, if I may so speak, by God. It finds itself in such lucidity that in the twinkling of an eye it perceives its whole life and in accordance with what it sees, what it deserves. It's the soul itself that in the midst of such a clear sight pronounces its own sentence. It does not see God, but is annihilated by his presence. If it is a guilty soul, as was my own case, and in consequence has merited purgatory, it is so crushed down by the weight of its faults, still remaining to be effaced, that it plunges itself of its own accord into purgatory. It is then, and only then, that one understands God, his love for souls, and how wretched sin is in the eyes of his divine majesty. St. Michael is there when the soul leaves the body. It is him alone that I saw and that all souls see. He is, as it were, the witness and the executioner of divine justice. And by the way, we see that quite often in icons of him. He has the balance in his hand. I return to the text. I also saw my guardian angel. All this is to help you to understand how it is that it can be said that St. Michael carries our souls to purgatory, because a soul can't be carried. Yet nonetheless, it's true. And as much as he is there, present at the execution of the sentence. All that goes on in the other world is a mystery for yours. But in is another part of the Pergamon manuscript, the answering of the puzzlement of the living nun with regard to the geography of the beyond. It is difficult for us to understand how a soul, being spiritual, can have movement, but yet the angels do have the gift of agility. There is movement, and it seems, from what is coming back in the likes of this manuscript, that it is for those souls who have to go for purification or worse, it is a downward movement, and the lowest level of purgatory is very close to hell, and it seems to be, as has been understood by mankind, down, down which actually does correspond to what we find in science. The further down one goes, the more heat is involved. And it's not 
quite so simple to dismiss what happened in the 80s and was kept quiet by the communist authorities as best they could but without complete success. But when they drilled as far as they possibly could into the bowels of the earth, recording everything with delicate instruments all the way, at a certain point when they went into what was no longer solid but becoming liquid, for a while, only a few seconds, about 30 seconds, the instruments were still recording as it went very quickly round and they were picking up howling screams and it was all to be kept hush hush but it leaked out and the sounds can be heard on internet fairy tales we say and if they were why were the communists so keen on keeping it quiet Now, Old Nick has every interest in making sure that this, or anything similar, is never talked about or thought about. Rock them to sleep and keep them distracted and in their comfort zone of pleasure, so that all the energy gives is given to the body and the major part, the soul, is left uncared for. Il Vangelo oggi parla della natura dell'anima. La parola usata in greco è is angeloi, uguali agli angeli. La struttura dunque sarebbe angelica. E sappiamo anche dalla scienza moderna che l'anima è capace di sussistere senza il corpo. Si vede delle operazioni molto delicate in cui devono indurre una morte clinica per operare sul cranio. L'anima vede da di fuori. E l'anima dunque è reale e non può smettere di esistere. Nel manoscritto del Purgatorio abbiamo diverse descrizioni della natura della vita dell'aldilà, dunque senza corpo. È un mondo ignorato da noi, misterioso. C'è movimento e alla morte c'è una partenza e un movimento chiaro. La direzione dipende dal merito dell'anima. La presenza di San Michele è lì e anche dell'angelo custode. E lì si vede un istante dopo la morte la realtà dell'aldilà e dell'anima stessa. E l'anima stessa diventa un po' il suo giudice perché vede la sua realtà e che può o non può andare verso Dio in quel momento lì. Andare verso Dio non preparato sarebbe andare verso un gran fuoco, un incendio. Preferisce aspettare, o se davvero è persa, preferisce andare al massimo fuori Dio. E questa è realtà, l'ultima realtà a cui nessuno pensa. Si vede come intelligente l'angelo che fu il più brillante, Lucifero, che vi tenderà a avere quante posse di anima con lui nel suo regno, non di luce, ma di tenebra totale. Servite Dio nell'allegrezza, cantate a tutti, grande Signore. Terra tutta, danno di a Dio, canta il tuo Signore. Noi siamo il gregge che li guida, popolo suo.